let's dive into how to spot a fake MTG card and some of the techniques that you can use to make sure that you don't get taken with a counterfeit card. Now the first technique we're going to use is actually just a tactile feel of the card itself. So let's take the fake of a Bayou and the real one being here, a revised. And let's just start off by just mentioning that it just immediately feels wrong. It doesn't feel quite right. Something about it, maybe too waxy, too glossy, something, something just doesn't feel right. And you're going to gain that ability through just a lot of practice and a lot of holding these cards. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to look at the glossiness of the cards because a lot of fakes just have this inability to make the actual printing look quite right and as if you if you notice the the light just bounces off of that it's incredible and a lot of fakes have that problem so let's take the actual real revised Bayou and do the same exact thing so it already feels right and notice how it's more dull with that reflection that is another way you can kind of already initially see that oh I got a real one and I got a fake one and even though this may be obvious I'm gonna mention it anyways if you already have a real version and you compare them a lot of the times you're gonna see coloration issues now that's also something to keep in the back of your head because different versions will have different colorations depending on when they were printing how they were printed which which uh area they came out of you know where they printed in america somewhere else etc 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 all right but that's a pretty deep dive so let's do the same field test with the gaia's cradle so immediately when i grab these two well i have the real one in a sleeve so <laughs> that's kind of cheating i guess but immediately just by feeling the card, I know immediately that this one on the left is fake. It's got that same issue where it's got glossiness. It feels off. Uh, the corners just seem too rigid. And this is a really old card, so it just seems too perfect. With the real guy's cradle, uh, you have a couple nicks, you know, from actual play. I mean, even if this was pack fresh, never been used, uh, then it would be perfect. If you're buying one of these, you're going to be paying a serious premium because there are very few near mint, mint Gaius cradles out there. So that's another thing to consider. And it just feels right. It's got that normal dull gloss thing going. Um, you know, it's not perfect. And a lot of these older cards are not going to be perfect. This one, at least on the face of it, just looks absolutely perfect. But, again, it's got that weird, shiny, this doesn't feel right kind of situation. Alright, have I belabored that first initial way of testing these cards enough? Why, yes, yes, I have. And before we get on to the next one, let's just mention that, you know, it's one thing to have proxy cards and to know you have the proxy cards. Uh, it's another thing to think that you have the real deal uh, where it's an actual fake. Especially you've gotten taken, and then if you go to sell it and you end up uh, selling a fake Ah, that sucks. It sucks for you, and that sucks for the for the potential buyer. All right, on to technique numero duo. Technique number two. This is called the bend test. It's a very common test. I don't necessarily recommend this test. Here's what it is. You take the card, and you bend it, and you touch one end to the other. And if it's an actual card, it's going to bend back and flatten out without there being a crease or damage to the actual card. Uh, I recommend you never, ever, ever do this with someone else's card without permission. If you're going to be buying one and go, hey, just make sure you go, hey, can I uh, try the bend test? They're going to say yay or nay, depending. And they're probably going to say nay if it's an older card. And the reason is, with older cards, MTG has stated that after you do roughly 10 to 12 bend tests on an older card, they are prone to fail as well, even though they are a real 
real card. Just general wear and tear is going to wipe that card out. So I do not recommend doing the bend test on dual lands, older cards. Uh, it's just not worth the risk, especially with the value that is of these older cards. But, you know, like a Doom Scar, if for some reason you're thinking it's a fake, although it's brand new out of Kaldheim as of his recording, I mean, if you want to, yeah, do the bend test. Or especially do the bend test so you get used to knowing what a card feels like, what the real deal feels like. All right, bend test. Check. Next up is a great one. I recommend this, especially for any older cards that have higher value. And that is using a jeweler's loop to look at a couple very specific things within a card. And the jeweler's loop, it's got a nice little uh, light so that you can magnify it, take a look at a couple things in particular. Let's go ahead and look at the actual bayou itself. Turn on the light. And I will go ahead and throw up a couple pictures to give you more examples instead of just the jeweler's loop here. But what you do is you look at the actual text itself. And what you'll notice is on the real cards, you're going to see very crisp lines where the writing is, where it meets the other printing. And if you see that very crisp line, good chances this is a real card, especially if you're using the other techniques in conjunction with this. The other thing is the actual jewelettes within the printing. On a real card, these are going to be very obvious and very clear to you, as you can see in these examples I'm throwing up onto the screen. And especially if you're dealing with a fake that's using CMYK or a dot printer, that kind of stuff, this is going to make it very prevalent. And the other thing you can do is flip it on its side and take a look at like the logo and a couple of the jewels and you're going to notice very clear definition and then if you go into where it has the illustrator and you look at how the ringlets are it really jumps out at you the fakes as opposed to the real deal and again this does take a little bit of practice it's a very very useful uh, technique um, that I highly recommend you do this and if you haven't done it before just take 20 cards and practice take one that you know is a fake and take one that you know is, is the real deal and just just practice taking a look at it so the jeweler's loop another highly recommended way of checking for fakes uh, before moving on to the next technique, hey, if you're new to the channel, please hit subscribe, hit that like button, hit the alerts to check out our other material. Uh, it's very helpful if uh, you subscribe to the channel. All right, moving on, moving on. The next test is another great one. I also highly recommend this, doing this with the... Um, jeweler's loop technique and that is the light test all right we're now set up for the light test so let's take the actual real deal here for a second and notice in the light the light shines through pretty well and we can see the magic logo coming through we can see all of the blue very clearly and then if you go down below you can not only see the deck master on the flip side of this the back but you can see the writing as well on the front side coming through. Now you can flip it and do the same thing where where the logo is and you can see the writing coming through where the text is of the dual land itself and it just looks very even and you can even spot some of the blue ink as well the blue hue especially right there. All right now let's take the fake and show you how significantly different that is the light is barely coming through it's very foggy should I say and uh, it's hard to tell what's going on with that that is a very common technique to spot a fake with relatively ease is this light technique now again this isn't necessarily something you're going to want to do just the light technique for 
all by itself. You're going to want to do this in combination with some of the other tests. All right, let's move on to the next test and get back some light here. Boom, shalaka lock, boom, and boom, shalaka lock, boom. All right, I'm not even going to edit that out. We're just going to roll with it, folks. Roll with it. All right, so we have gone through the, the tactile test, the feel test, um, the bend test, the light test, the jeweler's loop test, and finally is the rip test, which we're not going to do because it's the ultimate test. Um, it's not really a practical test. Basically, all you would do is you would rip the card in half. You'd look for the blue ink inside of it. We're not even going to do that. I will show you an example up on the board. And um, a real one would have uh, the blue, and a fake one typically would have black or just wouldn't be there. And that's called the rip test. I do not recommend doing the rip test because it is the final test. Um, you might, you know humorously do it because you already know it's fake and you're getting rid of fakes out of it um again uh, you might actually have some fakes because they are proxies and proxies are one thing but having a fake that's trying to be pawned off as a real one that's uh that's troublesome hope you never get caught in that situation where you thought you had a real one and they ended up being fake especially with a lot of these older cards um obviously this is just more anecdotal all the power nine here that's just completely and utterly fake i will leave you with this on this episode is just a lot of times it's common sense um just knowing that you know if it if it seems too good to be true it probably is um you know if you go to ebay and the seller has 20 or less feedback and they're selling you know power nine or even a dual land and it's the only thing they're selling and it's like fifty dollars cheaper than the market and it just it looks perfect and it's near mint and etc cetera, etc cetera. uh buyer beware stay away from that stuff most likely you're gonna get burned and i don't want that nope that would suck um and you know the other thing is even on places like tcg player um most of the time uh, you're going to be getting the real deal but it never hurts to go ahead and put some of these tests in play and try to just make sure that you didn't accidentally get a fake uh, because sometimes people don't even realize they have fakes because they bought it from somewhere else so just be very careful out there in the market and make sure you're buying from reputable places and if you're doing things like you know going on to the facebook uh, community buying area just be very careful with that kind of stuff and um um, I would even recommend going to places and, and doing the tests right in front of them. Nothing wrong with that. Uh, there is one final test that we're not going to go over, and it's um, where you actually get the card wet. Uh, I don't like that test, so I'm not even going to show the test. Um, I think it's dangerous for the cards, um, but that's about it. All right, thanks for tuning in. If you have any questions or comments or thoughts, put them in the comment section, uh, and we'll answer any questions you got. All right, how to spot a fake. Thanks for tuning in. Check out our other episodes.